Aloha, sustainable farmer Drew, garden of gardens, sacred herbs and botanicals. Just coming at you with a new one. Today we're gonna look at Nafita cataria. This is a wonderful plant. I hope that you'll love the information and thank you for watching and let's get into it. We might not see the outcomes, we might see the clues, but when you plant a seed, it's got to grow before it blooms. Oh. Okay, this plant here. And it's in the Lamiaceae or Lamiaceae family, depends who you're talking to. And that's commonly known as the mint family, which comprises about 250 different species. And the common names, or you know, the most common name, is catnip. You might see it sold as um, cat mint. That is actually Napita faasenii. It is not the same species. And there are some differences, such as smell and um, look. This one is a lot weedier than the um, faasenii. Uh, and also known as cat wart. Some of the identifying characteristics of catnip is that it's a short-lived herbaceous perennial that grows up to one meter, which is about three feet, and it has a square stem. So I'd like to show you the example I have here. Hopefully you can see that square hollow stem, right? Another thing about the plant is that it has opposite leaves. That's common in the mint family. So they're opposite leaves of each other, All right? So when it does flower, it produces these bilabiate flowers. I'm so lucky to have these flowers. It's not supposed to be flowering now. And flowers are about a half inch long and have five petals, which they're really small and they're united into a two lipped tube. The upper lip consists of two lobes while the lower lip has three lobes and is larger and often more spotted than the upper lip. This is consistent within the uh, mint family. On this species, it has this white lavenderish purple spots on the flower. So it's a white flower with those spots on it. And they come up on these dense clusters at the end of the stems and branches. The leaves are known as like heart shaped or triangular leaves. And they have this incise serrate pattern, which kind of resembles the tooth edge of a saw blade. You can see that on the margins of a leaf. And it has a pointed stem. The stem can be kind of opaque. Uh, it's hairy, a little bit of gray. And the upper surface is uh, pale green on the leaves. And the lower surface is kind of so densely covered with hairs. So it's like a pale green that it appears silverish gray or silverish green sometimes has this faint blue or silverish hue to it and it has this really um light minty smell to it and when it's dried usually when the cats go crazy for it it kind of smells like grass and some say it even smells like skunk like a skunk and that has some resemblance to a more popular plant that people like to smoke we'll talk about that in a minute um, it grows from late spring through fall and it likes like sandy to loamy soils, um, preferring well-drained soils. Uh, it does not like shade, but it can do in partial shade like it is here and grows best in open areas or like hedgerows or waste grounds or near streams and borders of um, areas of fields, right, like this. And it grows best in temperate climates. Catnip is hardy in USD zones three through nine. You know, when it's mature, it can withstand hard freezes. There is promise for use for this plant in um, crop protection. In fact, um, catnip was intercrop with uh, collard greens and brassicas in one study, and it, it was planted in alternating rows. And this reduced the number of flea beetles also, extracts of catnip have also been shown to be effective for uh, eggplant from adult and larval stages of the uh, Colora Colorado potato beetle. It also attracts beneficial insects. You can't go wrong with that. Nafeta lactones, which is the primary chemical constituent in this plant, can re repel insects. 
and it's it's comparable to the effectiveness of DEET. So we all know DEET, which is NN diethylmetatolumide. Plants in the genus Nepeta um, are commonly known for their ability to modify behavior of cats. Um, humans have tried to use catnip to induce an, a euphoric eye. Whether or not that is actually effective or occurs in humans is controversial. And don't get me wrong, there is a time and place for actually smoking this plant, but not for the sake of, uh, hey, I want to just, you know, whatever. I'm not judging anyone, but it's not just for, you know, it does have hallucinogenic effects, which we'll talk about in a minute, but um, it can have, I should say. So, yeah. Um, then the phetalactones are these vo volatile metabolites in the plant and are thought to kind of mimic cat pheromones. Now, these are the happy receptors in the, in the brain of the cat. And a lot of previous research, well, though there's not much on catnip, is thought that this was for sexual reasons. Um, but it's really the result in a euphoric, re euphoric reaction to, for the cats. So most likely the adaptive function of nephetalactones in nephita is to protect against herbivorous insects and not the olfactory simulation of cats. Now there was this interesting study by um, Sebastian Bull in 2017 in the BMC Veterinary Medicine Journal and cats responded to other plants in a cat lip like manner um, and these were plants called silver vine which is actinid actinidia polygamma and that's a relative of the kiwi fruit yet there was different different chemical composition in these plants and actually the silver vine is more powerful so in fact valerine is more chemically similar to catnip than any other plant so it can also be worked for some of the things we're going to talk about in a few minutes and interestingly ayahuasca vine the energetics of a uh, mint family is that plants kind of uh, meander through this complex energy of uh, force first warm and then cool uh, qualities they have this warming and cooling effect, which is really um, the affinity. It, it has this affinity for organs ruled by Venus. Um, and herbs of Venus are really feminine and gentle. It's very soft and relaxing. You know, many Venetian plants are nervines. Those relax the muscle spasm, tension, cramping and bring a sense of openness and calmness um, so there's this warming quality is used as like a digestive stimulant and a cool a, has this cooling um, kind of like aftertone to release anxiety you know the aromatic warmth of catnip helps to like move gas out of the gut to relieve like internal pressure which can play uh, an important role for uh, heartburn sufferers, especially when it's paired with anxiety and uh, tension. So relieving tension to, um, you know, allowing the, the venting of heat is what catnip is great for. And you can combine that with things like um, elderberry for uh, things like fever. It's also a great, you know, female reproductive tonic. Um, which are ruled by Venus, are uterine tonics. They relieve um, blood stagnation and stimulate menses. You know, nervines help to kind of relax cramping and mood swings as well. Energetic properties of medicinal plants are kind of related to its chemistry. Through these properties, we know how a plant will kind of influence tissue state patterns and bodily constitutions. You know, this force is interwoven into all the plants and people. And so this influence is not only the body, but the spirit and the soul. The doctrine of signatures is something I love talking about, is the leaves are kind of heart-shaped, right? And when you think of Venus plants, they have this ability to, to heal emotional 
heart traumas or heart issues and relationships. So especially wounds from relationships or past relationships, right? Um, and I also think of it as a, the sun and the shade as a doctrine of signature, which represents the warming and coolness of this plant. It goes back to the 11th century. Europeans brought it over to the Americas, but it was used in European and American folk medicine, and Native American and First Nations used this plant for centuries. You know, they used it to promote things like sleep and relaxation, as well as for um, complaints for children and to soothe stomach issues as well as a overall digestive tonic and this is a common thread throughout so many different cultures and it makes sense because this is just a quality of Venetian plants. Catnip is also known mostly for being a great comative so for things like irritability and nervousness and sleeplessness and anxiety you know, I mentioned earlier, kind of smells like skunk and that kind of, some people like to think it smells like marijuana or it can be used in place of marijuana. You'll see people trying that all over the place. And in the 1960s, they tried to actually do that. They tried to use it as a marijuana substitute. But aside from catnip being a great gastrointestinal ally, you know, it's also known for respiratory disorders such as um, chronic bronchitis and it has this like anti-spasmodic uh, quality. It's antipyretic for fevers and diaphoretic. It helps you sweat. So this has been attributed to its use for colds and flus and fevers. And how do you want to prepare this plant? You can use the leaves, tincture them. You can steep them into a tea, which is very common. An infusion. You can smoke them. Um, you can make a poultice for skin issues. You can juice it, which is great for menstruation. And the young leaves can be eaten raw. Uh, older leaves you can put in soups uh, and things of that nature. Soups and stews and potter um, and flavoring. So it's really great for vitamins A, B, C. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, A, B, and C, as well as things like um, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, sodium, sulfur as well. Now, some of the contraindications of catnip um, include, you know, abuse of it may include like a headache. Sorry for the hands in there, just trying to switch angles. Um, large amounts of the tea can cause vomiting. You know, there was one report that exists and of this infant who developed a stomach ache and was irritable and that followed with him being weak and then like went into this hypnotic state after ingesting like raisins soaked in catnip and he was chewing on the tea bag. So I think that's an extreme example and I don't know any others. So generally it's known to be a very safe plant for children but if you have something like pelvic inflammatory disease you know small doses under the guidance of a medical professional or herbalist or avoid the plant it's also the same case for menorrhagia which is excessive bleeding for the women out there and because catnip is also used to stimulate menstruation you know you just want to be mindful of that you know discontinue it and I would say any herb, you know, about two weeks before any kind of surgical procedures. And use caution or avoid this plant or use it under the guidance if you're pregnant, you know, nursing, if you have liver or kidney issues or any psychiatric disorders. If you're taking medicines that affect your central nervous system, especially um, central nervous system depressants, then you gotta keep in mind that herbs that are sedative or have sedative properties can enhance the therapeutic or adverse effects of those medications. Some of them include things like California poppy, um, hops, or uh, Piper methysticum, kava, hypericum, St. John's wort, uh, skullcap, valerian, um, yerba mansa, things of this nature. Um, you know, catnip is thought to have these diuretic properties and 
theoretically, you know, due to these potential diuretic effects, you know, those, especially with those who have psychological conditions and rely on lithium as a medication, it can increase lithium, levels of lithium, and reduce excretion. So the dose of lithium may need to be decreased. You know, this wonderful, amazing plant ally. I hope you enjoyed this video about it and found it useful. Please leave some comments or subscribe to my channel. I intend to be making more videos more often now. Um, sorry for my break. But um, yeah, I just want to say much love, light, peace, aloha, and be well.